Turkey's currency crisis is escalating as the lira hits new lows, shaking markets worldwide. The NATO ally faces sanctions, inflation is rising, its president feuding with President Trump. This country is taking quite the blow, dealt something of a death blow when then the U.S. administration decided to sanction two Turkish ministers as well as slap tariffs on Turkish aluminum and steel imports. That move was actually akin to punching someone in the gut when they were already down, which has resulted in President Erdogan saying that the U.S. is effectively waging a war on the Turkish economy and stabbing Turkey, a NATO ally, in the back. Okay, there's more to this story than what the media is reporting about what's going on with the sanctions on Turkey. This nation is, has been in an economic crisis. Its currency, the lira, hitting a record low yesterday. It did recover slightly today. U.S. markets ending up today as well. This is what's going on. An American pastor and citizen is still under house arrest in Turkey. He's accused of plotting to overthrow the Turkish government in 2016. U.S. authorities say he is innocent. The charges are not legitimate. And that this pastor, Andrew Brunson, being wrongfully contained. Now, more than 110,000 people have to been detained by Turkey in this post coup 2016 crackdown. Nearly 50,000 of them arrested on no specific charges, according to, well, on specific charges. We don't really know what those charges are. That's according to the Interior Ministry there. Let's bring in American Islamic Forum for Democracy President Dr. Zudi Jasser. Okay, Turkey blaming everybody else for its economic meltdown, They're blaming social media, the West, but it made a classic mistake. It started to borrow heavily in U.S. dollars, and when its own currency collapsed, its debt load exploded. Is everyone forgetting about that and the human rights violations that Turkey is committing? It's, it's bizarre, Liz, and to hear the montage you just showed, these are journalists, and yet the country labeled by almost every human rights organization as the one that treats journalists the worst, has imprisoned thousands of journalists, is Turkey. Erdogan is a two-bit dictator that has transformed a so-called NATO country into a theocracy, and here you have prisoner Andrew Brunson, who is heroically representing the tip of the iceberg of a much bigger problem. Turkey is regionally part of the Qatar-Iran axis of Islamist hegemony, if you will. They want to threaten American interests. They're anti-Semitic, anti-Western, anti-Israel. They radicalized ISIS, which is one of the reasons Syria has continued in its prolonged civil war. So one thing after the next they're functioning not like a democracy but rather like a dictatorship and yet they want to focus and say we're the ones the united states who i thought they were on our side these media american media uh, are the ones at fault when in fact he's the one and his government is the one deteriorating i mean we know turkey has been a member of nato for a while that doesn't give them carte blanche to behave the way they are so one sanction threat creates an entire country's meltdown really i mean it's turkey's own self-inflicted wounds to your point doctor it's uh, economic mismanagement you know all the companies combined on the turkey stock exchange are worse than netflix worth less they're worth less than netflix in market value this is not a functioning economy it hasn't been for a while it really isn't. And what's great about the sanctions that President Trump put in, and now you hear Secretary Pompeo echoing this, uh, uh, the uh, NSA advisor uh, John Bolton and others, the bottom line is, is we now have a concerted, coherent effort to put them in their place, different than Obama, who catered to dictators like Iran and others. And the prisoner, Pastor Brunson, is no different than Otto Wambir was. But now we have a president who is going to force them to force their hand and wake up the Turkish people. And I think if as long as we we're in for the long game. The drop in the lira, which has been 10% in the last two weeks, is going to drop a lot more and ultimately, I think, begin to put pressure on Erdogan that is not going to let his administration, his regime, last very long. Yeah, you make an important point. We don't know if Turkey's economic collapse now unfolding is sort of like the 1998 debt crisis that really hit, um, you know, Russia hard. Uh, Russia, and also the EU crisis in 2010 where Greece belly flopped. Here's the issue to your point, doctor. Turkey is alleged to have delivered weapons to groups affiliated with ISIS and Al Qaeda. And that happened a few years ago. It is close with Russia and Iran. And helping Turkey build massive nuclear power plants in that country. Russia also selling Turkey S 400 anti aircraft missiles that are incompatible with NATO systems. Right, doctor? Exactly. And this is why it's important that we pay attention to this, because our so-called friends in NATO 
are he's exploiting the fact that he's he's in NATO in order to to do these things under the radar because we don't, we don't keep track of our NATO allies like we would Iran or like we would North Korea or others who are obviously enemies. So he's exploiting that fact. And by the way, when Iran was bypassing sanctions during the Obama administration, Turkey was the one transmitting gold and other ways to bypass American sanctions. Yeah. So Turkey has long been a bad actor. And finally, we have an administration who is not you know, who is not allowing them to, to perpetuate that bad action and is finally containing them from, pr from pressing on. Now, Doctor, you have your ear to the ground on how the people are suffering on the streets in places like Iran and Turkey. What are they telling you about Western media coverage and whether or not reporters are covering the story the way they see what's going on? Similar to the economy in Iran, you know, our, our media is talking about Iran saying that somehow this is a, a Western deal and it's not, it's going to hurt the Iranian people when in fact they're saying there is nothing more pro-Iranian people than having the economy of the tyrants fail so that the people can have more room to push because they're the ones withdrawing money from the banks so that their economy weakens. Similarly in Turkey, the Turkish friends we have that are secular, liberal, believe in Turkish nationalism are against the resurgence of the Ottoman Empire like Erdogan cult wants. They're the ones telling us they want pressure on their government so that the bad action and the sucking of a socialist type system away from the people will stop. And this is the only way it's going to happen. Dr. Zudi Jasser, great to have you on. Come back soon. Anytime.